Good morning, everyone. So day two of enzymes, another day, another talking about enzymes, okay? And today we're gonna actually talk about factors that influence enzymatic activity, all right? So I do now says, what is an enzyme? Well, full definition, like we spoke about uh, yesterday, biological, catalyst, that speeds up the rate of chemical reactions. What is a substrate? Well, the substrate is a substance that the enzyme acts upon, okay? So the active or binding site, all right? That's the site where all the magic happens, okay? We're gonna discuss what that means, right? It's a site where substrate and enzyme interact. And by site, we mean place, okay? Uh, the protein chains fold to make a three-dimensional shape that has a specific pocket or a specific uh, shape. The specificity of an enzyme is dependent on its shape, once again. Super duper important, all right? So if you look at the lock and key theory, it is thought that in order for an enzyme to affect the rate of reaction, the following, oh, sorry. So the lock and key theory means one enzyme to one substrate. I keep picking the same colors. One enzyme to one substrate. Just like a lock and key, uh, that you guys actually have in real life, right? If I have my set of keys, let's say I have one key and it opens my front door, it shouldn't be able to open your front door as well. Otherwise, your lock is no good or my key is no good or something is wrong, right? Same thing that's going on with enzymes. They must maintain a specific shape and only interact with one type of substrate at all. They cannot interact with two or more substrates that are different, okay? So if you look here, you have an enzyme like this that has that shape. The only type of substrate that can interact with it is something circular. Because if you look here, it's a circular uh, shape, right? But that would, this would not be able to interact there because this is not a circular shape. This is more angular. Okay, so that wouldn't happen. I put an X. Okay. It is thought that in order for an enzyme to affect the rate of a reaction, the following events must take place. So the enzyme substrate complex. Enzyme forms a temporary association with the substrate or substrates. The enzyme and substrate form a close physical association between the molecules called an enzyme substrate complex. While the enzyme substrate complex is formed, the enzyme action takes place and the substrate is broken down into its smaller, simpler parts. Example, a disaccharide becomes two monosaccharides or two monosaccharides becomes a disaccharide. So we can either break down, digest, or we can synthesize, put together. After completion, the enzyme and the products separate. The enzyme is then ready to react with another substrate, okay? So if I have, let me just show you guys what that looked like. If I have this shape here, okay? And then I have these substrates. So this is the enzyme. 
and these are the substrates. Which one of those substrates will be able to interact with this enzyme? Would it be this? No, it definitely would not be that, right? Because they don't have the same complementary shapes. Would it be the triangle? No, again, they don't have the same complementary shapes. Would it be the rectangle? Yes, because this will be able to fit in there. And then once that fits in there, that's going to form what's known as an enzyme substrate complex. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so these two combined and it made an enzyme substrate complex. Okay, enzyme substrate complex. All right, once that happens, sorry, I'm gonna just move it over here. The enzyme, as we already said, is unchanged after the reaction. But the substrate, it might have been broken in two, into two smaller parts. So if this, was, if this green was a larger sugar, it was probably broken into two smaller sugars. And now this enzyme is free to go and work on other ones that look just like that, other sugars. Okay. All right. So there's two factors that you guys need to know that influence the rate at which enzymes actually behave. Okay. The first one is pH. And we have a whole lab on pH. Don't worry. The optimum best in most living things is close to seven, which is a neutral pH. Again, don't worry. That'll all make sense when we do our lab. Higher low, level P, uh, higher low pH levels usually slow down enzyme activity, okay? A few enzymes such as gastric peptidase work best at a pH of about 2.0, which is very, very acidic, okay? This is a very acidic environment because it's so low on the pH scale, okay? And we know gastric peptidase is an enzyme because you guessed it it ends in ASE, okay? The second one is temperature. Strongly influences enzyme activity. Optimum temperature for maximum enzyme activity is usually about 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. Reactions proceed slowly below optimal temperatures. Above 45 degrees, uh, most enzymes are destroyed. Another, the word that we use for destroyed enzymes is denatured, which we'll talk about tomorrow. Denatured. That just means that they don't work anymore. Do not work anymore. Okay. So if you've ever gone to the grocery store and you bought like meat, like chicken or steak or something, the reason why you put it inside of the freezer is because the freezer is much, much colder than in room temperature, right? So if you put that meat inside of the freezer, whatever bacteria is trying to break down the meat and work on getting the nutrients out of the meat, their enzymes will slow down drastically under really cold temperatures, which means that the meat will be preserved. Now, if you come home and you just leave the meat on the counter, the next day, the meat is probably not going to be good to eat anymore because bacteria have already started using their enzymes to break down the meats and then they leave behind like a lot of like toxic chemicals as a result of all of those um, chemical reactions that you don't get to see with your naked eye, right? So that's why you put meat in the freezer because it slows down the rate of enzymatic activity. Now, does it completely stop? No, it just slows it down. That's why if you ever left meat in your freezer for, I don't know, six months to a year, 
you'll actually see it kind of get like freezer burn and it's still not good to eat because it doesn't, it doesn't stop enzymes completely, but it does slow it down. That's why they also put deceased people inside of like really cold morgues. It's to stop the body from decaying as a result of enzyme activity. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so you know, as usual, do your exit tickets, okay? And we will see all of you all tomorrow. Bye.